But the Lord gave me a very simple, uh, short message, also in line with living daily. So it's sort of, I mean, giving me the, 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 the glimpse of knowing that living our life daily is so very, very important as a believer. All right. So this morning, I just want to entitle my message, Living Daily with the Right Focus. Living daily with the right focus. All right. And uh, shall we just bow our heads and ask the Lord to lead us this morning? Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We can come into your presence. We thank you for your awesome worship. We can just touch you in worship. And Father, we pray this morning, even as we look into your word, Father, I pray that you will open our eyes to see, Lord. Open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear. And Father, we pray whatever has been spoken, whatever has been preached, Lord, it will come alive to our spirit, Father. Lord, there are many scriptures in the, in the word that we have read it again and again, Lord. But we pray, Father, this morning, that same verse from the Bible will begin to speak to us and awaken our hearts, Lord. That we will live a life daily that will actually glorify you. And we will live the life daily with such an awesome power because of your spirit within us, Father. God, this morning we pray. Bring the word of life and bless our hearts this morning, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm just taking this short, short message. I always try to think in my mind, it's a communion service, I must preach a short message. And last night I was looking at the message and said, wow, it's so short. People will say, oh, pastor never prepared for today. <laughs> I suddenly realized that a message is so short. And the Holy Spirit was telling me, it's not what you prepare is going to come forth touching the lives of people. It's what I say at that time when you are connected with him. That's what he said. All right, so at first I was feeling guilty. Yeah, I didn't prepare a long message. You know, I am so short, if you might just go in prayer and everybody would, might be disappointed. But the Spirit of God wants to give us things that he speaks to me there and then. And you receive them, and that is going to change lives. This is exactly what we need, friends. It is the power of God coming upon you through the word and making it alive to you. And that's why when we say, Lord, make your word come alive. It's the spirit of God that will begin to speak and make us come to a place of reaching out to him and say, Yes, Lord, I want to live daily with you, God. All right, so this morning, friends, and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. You have heard it many times. You have read it many times. All right. Now, first of all, as believers, the Lord Jesus Christ, as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we live, our life on earth and the way we live is so important. We need to have the right focus in our everyday life. Now, as Christians, we are expected to maintain that focus. The right focus in our daily living. Now, I want to just bring to you these two scriptures. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have received from God. You are not your own. And verse 20 says, you were bought at a price. You were bought at a price. Therefore, Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now the body, friends, our body is designed to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our bodies are made, are made in such a way to host God's presence. Just imagine, our bodies are made, are designed to host God's presence. Now, the Holy Spirit actually dwells within the body of the believer. We all know that. All right. Now, so when you accept Christ as a, as, and become a child of God, God's Spirit comes to you, comes into you. So this, this Spirit of truth, which makes you, which comes into you, gives you the truth of knowing what Jesus has done on the cross. Now, we were just partaking of the, of the communion this morning. And the Spirit of truth that comes into you will bring you the truth of knowing what God has already done for you. So no believer has to walk into the sanctuary to partake the communion with such guilt and condemnation. 
This spirit of truth that comes into us gives us the truth and the truth will set us free. You know, truth will set us free to know that he has already done it. So nobody has to come so condemned. Oh, this whole week I didn't read my Bible. I'm very condemned. I didn't come to church for two weeks. You don't have to come in condemnation. There is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation because he has already done it. So the spirit of truth that comes into you, all right, when you accept Christ, comes in and dwells in you. We know it theoretically. Theoretically, we all know the spirit of God comes to me when I'm born again. Yes. But I want to give you another two scriptures. John 14 and verse 17 says, the spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. For he lives with you and will be in you. One more scripture, John 14 and verse 20. He says, on that day, you will realize that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. Jesus saying this, right? On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you, all HRC members, are in me. All HRC members are in me and I am, Jesus says, am in you. Alright? You read the scripture many times. But let's allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and give us this fresh understanding of this truth. Alright? Jesus in you in you and you know that he is in you the believer does not receive the spirit of god by working for him or getting involved in church coming regularly and passing attendance in church the believer does receive the spirit of god as a gift from god as a gift from god so here we're talking about living daily now how can i maintain the right focus in my daily living how can i do that now there are three key Bible truths that I want to share with you this morning and then we are going to close and pray. The three Bible truths that will help us to maintain the right focus in our daily living. The first one is, you have been bought at a great cost. You have been bought at a great cost. As I said, the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, taking upon himself the burden of our sin and shame, paid the penalty, on our behalf and today we are forgiven today we are forgiven we partook of the communion this morning we are forgiven cleansed and we become his children because he paid a heavy price to buy us back from our sinful nature he paid a heavy price to buy us back and bring us into a right standing with god today you are sitting there as the righteousness of God, not because you're pure and I'm pure, I'm standing behind the pulpit. Today, you and I are called the righteousness of God because of what He has done on that cross. Because of what He has done on the cross. All right? Now, that verse 20 of our text this morning, it says, You were bought at a price. You were bought at a price. So, what does that mean to us? What does that mean to us? Firstly, you are no longer belong, you no longer belong to yourself. You are no longer, you don't no longer belong to yourself. And the same verse, verse 19, he says, you are not your own. It's the same verse, right? I'm just picking out a few of the parts of the of the same words. You, you are no longer, you no longer belong to yourself. And the scripture in verse 19 says, You are not your own. Now, friends, it is important for you and I to understand this truth. Now, if I don't understand this truth, it will lead me to misunderstand my role in life. It will lead me to misunderstand my role in life. This will give you a wrong idea if you don't understand. It will give you a wrong idea that you belong to yourself. For my life, I want what I want to do, I'll do. You know, many times we say that, it's my life, why are you born? It's my life, right? So we, we, have, we have a wrong idea that you belong to yourself. Now, it will also give you a wrong idea that God exists.
to serve your purpose. We may have the wrong idea that we belong to ourselves and God exists to serve our purpose. Alright? So these wrong ideas can come to us if we don't understand this truth that you are no longer belonging to yourself. You are not your own, the scripture says. The second thing is, you belong to the Lord and He owns you. You belong to the Lord and He owns you. Now He paid a costly price. He left His throne in heaven and came down to earth, endured the torture and the beatings and was crucified for our sin. We know all that. Month after month, when, when we have our communion, we say this and we know that Jesus Christ paid a heaven price. He went through such torture and, and, and beatings just for us. Now if you look into the scriptures, there are many scriptures show us that he owns everything. The many scriptures show us that he owns everything and the whole world is his possession. Alright, now one of the scriptures is Psalm 50 verses 11 and 12. Psalm 50 verses 11 and 12. I know all the birds of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. And verse 12 says, if I were hungry, I would not tell you the whole world is mine and all is fullness. The whole world is mine. He speaks for itself. And all belongs to him. His fullness. And then Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8. You also know the scripture. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8. You know, you know something? Even the money that you earn belongs to him. But I'm just trying to bring you to your point that, that he owns us. We belong to him. We are not our own. And he owns everything. So even the money that you earn every day in your life, it actually belongs to him. So Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8 says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? And then the answer for that same line says, in tithes and offerings. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. In what way have we robbed you? And he says, in tithes and offerings. Now friends, tithes is one-tenth of what we earn. Tithes is one-tenth of what we earn. That one-tenth is called tithes, but offerings is what we give unto the Lord freely besides the tithes. So tithes and offerings are not the same thing. Many people mistake, oh, I've given my offering, I've given my tithes. Here the scripture gives us very clearly, tithes and offerings are two different things. Tithes is one-tenth of what you earn. Offerings is what you freely give. Out of your love for God, you freely give unto God. That is your offering, all right? And so as I told you, tithe refers to a one-tenth of your income and that you set aside for God. Now this whole concept of setting aside a portion, this whole concept was seen right from the beginning in our, in the Old Testament, in the beginning of in Genesis. In, 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 in the book of Genesis, it speaks about Adam and Eve's children, Cain and Abel. You remember Cain and Abel? They brought portions of their flocks and crops before the Lord. They, the first portion of their, the crops and, their, uh, and the flocks and crops they brought before the Lord. The idea was to set aside portion of their first crop, first crop of the season, to thank God for a successful harvest. That was the reason why Cain and Abel brought their first crop of the season to thank God for their su successful harvest. Now this practice continued as the Israelites grew in the law. As the Israelites grew, the concept of offering first fruits grew into offering God a tithe, a tenth of one's income, a tenth of one's income. And then you see in the New Testament, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, you all know, he planted many churches all over the world, spoke on the subject of giving. He spoke on the subject of giving. He encouraged the people on giving beyond the tithes. Beyond one tenth. There is more than one tenth. That's what Paul preached in the New Testament. He encouraged the people to give beyond one tenth. In fact, he taught them to give generously. He taught them to give consistently. And he taught them to give joyfully. These are three ways that 
the Apostle Paul taught in the New Testament you know, in giving. And the scripture also says in, in 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 6, the very familiar scripture, he says, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. All right? The scripture speaks for itself. Now, what I want to bring here, friends, is we are actually giving back to God what belongs to Him. Okay? Earlier in the scriptures, we, we, we established that everything belongs to Him, even His fullness, the whole wide world belongs to Him and His fullness. And we are giving back what actually belongs to Him. The principle of giving shows your heart and honoring worship. Shows, shows your heart to honor God and worship Him. So as believers, we honor and glorify Him by giving generously out of our love. We don't give out of our compulsion. We actually give, honor and glorify Him by giving generously out of our love for God, by giving consistently and giving cheerfully. All right, there's another, another scripture I'm sure you all know in, in, in 2 Corinthians 9, 7. He said, the Lord God loves a cheerful giver. So Christian believers are expected to give cheerfully, consistently, joyfully. Joyfully giving unto God. All right. And that's exactly what uh, God expects because whatever we have, whatever we earn, it, it belongs to Him. So as believers, we give as unto God and honor and glorify Him in worshiping Him from our hearts. It's our hearts. Our giving is from the hearts. All right? From our hearts. And by giving, we understand the value of investing in the kingdom of God. I mean, the reason why God brings this kind of principle is so that his kingdom shall come. So that his kingdom shall be established. So when we start honoring God and giving him freely, generously and consistently, we are actually, we really understand the value of investing in the kingdom of God. Now, as Christians and believers, our focus must be God. As Christians and believers, our focus must be God, realizing that everything we own belongs to God. Everything I own belongs to God. I remind myself, the Mercedes that I'm driving for the last three years, it belongs to God. I better use it for God's glory. Everything that I own, including the money that I receive, including the money that you earn, it actually belongs to Him. Yeah, my wife, my wife reminded me that uh, even the wife belongs to Him. <laughs> I almost forgot that, that wife belongs to Him. <laughs> Alright. So everything, including the wife, belongs to him, all right? Now, he is the one who gives us health and he has the power to make wealth, all right? He is the one. Today you are healthy and you're coming today and the doctors told you that your sickness, you can't do anything about it, you can't operate, you can't do anything, but today you are alive and you're coming to church because of he, of him, who gives you that health and divine health that you're walking with. Today, I mean, nobody can say how long we're going to live. The doctors have, might have given up hope on you. All right? And I'm actually reminded of our brother Raju. I, I'm sure he doesn't mind that I mention his name. You know, he, he went to the hospital and they, uh, they wanted to do a bypass surgery and they cut open and then they open up and said, Aya. And I mean, they didn't say Aya. They said, can't do anything. They closed all the vessels and they can't do anything. So what did the specialist do? They can't do anything. So they closed up and stitched him back and tell him to go back and come back every few months for a checkup. Today he is living because of him. His divine health is walking up and down. He walks with me. You know, he goes for walks with me and then once a week in the Sabramjaya, uh, a, a, a place where we walk. Today he's alive because of him. Because it is him who gives health. It is him who gives you wealth. It is Him who gives you help to make your money. What if you're working and say, oh, I got a good job, you know, every month I get so much of money and all that. What if your health is not good? What if, uh, what if uh, the, 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 the doctor says you are now cancer? What's the big, big issue of you having such a big job and earning so much of money? Doctor said there is no hope for cancer. But what I'm going to tell you here is, it is God who gives you health 
If God should give you the power to make wealth, everything that you have, including what you have in your pocket and in your purses, it belongs to God. So when we live daily honoring God and glorifying Him, we give unto Him cheerfully because it all belongs to Him. All right. Now in our daily living, we need to acknowledge that it's because of His sacrifice we are healed. Because of His sacrifices, we are healed. I, I told you to come to the front and say, let's all pray for healing. Not because I mentioned it, you're going to get healed. Not because I come and lay hands on you, no. It's because of His sacrifice, we receive healing. It's because of His sacrifice, we, give, we receive forgiveness. When He said, it is finished on the cross, He has defeated sin, the devil, and we live the abundant life now. We live the abundant life now because He rose from, from the dead and brought victory for our lives. Today we are walking in victory because of the victory that He has brought. That He arose from the dead, the resurrection power again. Alright? And so He brought victory. So maintaining a right focus in our daily living is to live with an attitude of gratitude. That means daily as a believer, friends, we got to say, thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Thank you, Lord, I was a sinner, but you forgive me. Thank you, God, for washing away my past. That nobody talks about my past anymore. I thank you, Jesus, for washing away my past. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me, cleansing me. So living daily with the right focus is walking and talking and living with an attitude of gratitude. I thank you, God. I praise you, Father. Oh, I thank you. Today, you say, I thank you, I'm alive. I'm sure Brother Raju will say, I thank you, Jesus, I'm alive. It's the same, friends. Every one of us, I think, that's beginning to thank him with the attitude of gratitude because he bought us with a price and he owns us. Our life belongs to him. All right? Now, the second thing is, the first one I told you was you have been bought at a great cost. The second thing is, your body is the place for the presence of the Almighty. I want to say that again. Your body is the place for the presence of the Almighty. In the same scripture, six, chapter 6 and verse 19, Paul declares that the believer's body is a temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit lives in you, I said. Now, if our body is God's dwelling place, I mean, just concentrate a little bit, okay? If our body is God's dwelling place and if it no longer belongs to us, if it no longer belongs to us, what right do we have to abuse our body? I want to say that again to you, right? If our body is God's dwelling place, as I said, and if it no longer belongs to us, what right do we have to abuse our body? What right do we have to abuse our body? Anything that is harmful to our body and destroys our body is bad, right? Anything that is harmful to our body and destroys, for example, even, even smoking cigarettes. Now the world says, ah, normal life, just a social life, everybody just smokes, and you know, it's a normal thing. The world has become come to a place that is normal. Everything the world says it's normal, it's okay. All my friends, all everybody is smoking, it's okay. But as a believer, the right focus, if you could begin to look at God's dwelling places within you and you are no longer belonging to Him, so what right do I have to abuse that body? Smoking cigarettes affects our lungs. Persistent alcohol consumption destroys our liver. So we all know that. Oh, we go to medical, we read medical books, we read all the journals and all that, we all understand all that. But here, why do we abuse our body if it belongs to Him and God's presence dwells in us? Alright? So we need to understand, friends, we are stewards of the body which actually belongs to Him and is His dwelling place. Alright? I hope you get that very clearly. So daily living with the right focus is to take care of our bodies. It is to keep yourself holy. In Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 20, what does it say? It says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. The Lord declares this, Be ye holy, for I am holy. You know the word for holy in Hebrew, uh, they call it kadask, 
Q U Q A D A S. All right, it is pronounced as Kadash, Kadash, and it means to be sanctified, means to be consecrated, means to be dedicated or to be separated from world and worldliness. That's what it means when it says holy, holy Kadash. I say you're being sanctified. You're sanctified, cleansed in your emotions, in your in your in your body. And consecrated and, and, and also dedicated unto God. Alright, that's what Kadash means. Alright, be ye holy for I am holy. Now, so living with the right focus as believers is continually to be filled. Continually be filled with His presence. Another very familiar scripture, Ephesians 5 and verse 19, it says, Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and spiritual songs, speaking to one another with psalms and Speaking to one another with psalms and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, making melody in your hearts to the Lord. All right. So daily in our lives, we stir up ourselves. Yeah, two weeks ago I talked to you about activating the, the resurrection power, right? Now today I'm talking about living daily and stirring yourself up towards God. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and, and singing spiritual songs and, and making melody in your heart. All right? Now, sometimes we watch some Hindi movies and some Tamil movies. And when we wake up in the morning, the tune of the Hindi song is playing in my mind. <laughs> All right? It plays in your mind, right? So you are actually, wow, wake up in the morning, only you are. I mean, kuch kuch hota hai. You know, kuch kuch hota hai. You are, you are, you are, oh, I like the song very much, right? So it's playing in your mind. Alright? Because you are now making melody in your heart with that song. So what if a believer, a believer who is a, a, a daily living with the right focus, fills himself with songs of the word, faithful words, and sings and making melody in your heart. What will happen? You will enjoy your life. Your daily living. You wake up in the morning and you sing unto the Lord. You wake up in the morning and you say, Lord, I, this morning I direct my prayer unto thee. That will be constantly in you, living daily. All right? Now, living daily with the right focus is to avoid doing anything that would offend God. Avoid doing anything that would offend God who is living in you. God is living in you, right? Avoid doing anything that offends God which is, who is living in you. Now, just doing anything as a believer that will tarnish your testimony as a believer. That means if you do anything that will, I mean, bring us down as a testimony. That's exactly, we're not glorifying God, alright? So, we need to come to a place, our focus must be not to do anything that will offend God inside you. God is inside you, alright? And not to do anything that will tarnish our testimony. So your body is the place of his dwelling presence. Your body is the, the place of his dwelling. His presence you are carrying. Think of that. His presence, almighty presence, you are crying, carrying. I am carrying. We are the carriers of his presence. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are carrying God's presence. Come on, say it. Yes, you are carrying God's presence. Let that come alive to our spirit. We are carrying God's presence. In other words, wherever you go and whatever we do, we can be a blessing to others. If we are carrying God's presence, wherever we go, whatever we do, we can be a blessing to others because God's presence is in us. Alright? Now, His presence within us will be able to touch other lives. His presence within us will be able to touch other lives. So if you are here to say, oh, I'm not a leader of the church. I don't do any ministry. I just come and go. It doesn't matter. But does the spirit dwell in you? Does God's spirit still dwell in you? So you too are carrying God's presence? So I'm not a pastor. I'm not a leader. It's okay. But you are carrying God's presence. So you can touch other people. That is a touch. There's an, uh, an ability and the anointing of God within you to touch lives. Even though you are not taking part in church activities. Because you are carrying God's presence. God's presence is within you. It's because we carry His presence, we counsel others and people are encouraged. 
Because we are carrying God's presence, we counsel others, people become encouraged. People with a heavy heart will be lifted up to rejoice. Because you are carrying God's presence and you are talking to the person. They can lift it up. They are encouraged. They are encouraged. And the Bible also tells us that we are the salt of the earth. In Matthew 5 and verse 13 it says we are salt of the earth. Living daily with the right focus is to recognize that you are called to minister life to people who are down and depressed. I want to tell this again to every one of us. You are called to minister life to those who are down and depressed. Not only your church leaders, not only your pastors, you. Because you are carrying the presence of God. You are called. You are called to minister life to people who are down and depressed. You and I have the ability, as I said, we have the anointing. Because God's presence you're carrying. You have the anointing to touch and bless others for God's glory. Okay? Now, as the carrier of His presence, you are called to be instruments of peace. You can impart peace to those who are restless, those who are worried, those who are restless, and those and, and those who are, who are full of fear and anxiety. You know, friends, even today, there are so many people walking around with such fear. Maybe something bad happened in the past. But because of the bad past, you are afraid that it might happen again. So you are living with fear and anxiety. I don't know, the Spirit of God just says that at this point, person here has that feeling that it may happen again. I'm going to be in trouble again. But I want to tell you that fear and anxiety comes from the devil. And I want to remind you, God's presence you are carrying. Alright, so you don't have to remain in the fearful uh, feeling and anxiety. And the presence of God within you, friends, will lift you up. All you have to do is close your eyes and get into His presence and He lifts you up. You may be downhearted. You may be discouraged with some of the circumstances. But all you have to do is go into the, into the presence of God and, and talk to God and that, that presence within you will rise up and you become full of joy and you will rejoice. You know, the, the presence of God, friends, within you will give you words in your heart to be an instrument of peace to other people. You have so many friends who are restless, who are anxious. They are full of anxiety. They are afraid that they may lose their job in another two months. That is such fear. We don't know what's going to happen for the future. But you are carrying the presence of God. You are carriers of His presence. All right. And I want to tell you the highest callings, highest callings that we can have is to host the presence of God. Are you excited to know that we are privileged to host God's almighty presence? It's the highest calling that you are carrying His presence. It's the highest calling. And you can be an instrument of peace. Friends, God is calling His church to be driven by His presence. If all of us are filled with, the, with His presence, God wants the church to be driven by His presence. So what will happen if every one of you sitting here are full and you recognize your authority, you have recognized the resurrection power in you, and you recognize that you are the carriers of His presence, you know what? We will turn the world right side up. We will touch people in the community and we won't have to see empty chairs. All of us who are here recognize that you are the carrier of His presence and you have a resurrection power in you. You will touch lives and bring them to the Lord here. That's what will happen. Alright, in these last days, this is what we want to see. Alright, we want to see people coming and, and God's call to the churches to be driven by His presence. You and I can be driven by His presence, touching lives. And bringing them towards God. So let us live daily. Driven and directed by the Holy Spirit. The spirit filled believers. Right focus would be. Living daily. Listening to the spirit's leading. Listening to the spirit's leading. And to do what he prompts us to do. You know friends. If you are carrying the presence of God. God is always prompting towards something. We are carrying the presence of God. God is actually prompting us something, to do something, to say something. But we are not listening. 
So if today you recognize that you are the carrier of his presence, you begin to be quieter and allow the Spirit of God to speak to you and tell you that brother, that person you met two days ago, he has a deep need. And you go back home, oh, the Spirit of God spoke to me then. And you go and speak to the brother, he said, the, the, the Spirit of God tells me that you have a deep need. Then that brother breaks down and cries. You know why? Because you are driven by the presence. They're driven by his presence. And we can touch lives. People will not come and tell you, you know, I've got this money problem, you know. I cannot pay this, I cannot pay that. People will come and tell you that they are lacking in finance. But as you begin to have the carriers of the presence inside you, you discern what the Spirit is saying. You can bless them. You can touch them. That is living daily with the right focus as a believer. Right focus as a believer. All right? Now, okay, the, the third one, the final one, your everyday life has a special purpose. Right, let, me, let me just tell you what I said in the beginning. The first thing I said was, you have been bought at a great cost. The second thing I said was, your body is the place of the presence of the Almighty. And the third thing I want to say this morning is, your everyday life has a special purpose. Everyday life. We all know we have a special purpose in God, in our ministry and all that. But I want to tell you this morning, your everyday life has a special purpose. That means every day living for God, we need to accomplish and fulfill God's special purpose for that day. Today I pray, Lord, the message that you gave me, I don't feel that, that I don't feel so good about the message, but I want you, Lord, because you said there's a special purpose for me, for you in this service today. And Lord, I trust you and I want to live like this to fulfill your special purpose. And this morning, if you are you're, you're receiving the word and touching, touching God and saying, yes, that I'm going to live with it as a carrier of his presence, God has touched you. It's because that special purpose is being fulfilled. What about your life today when you're sitting down here? Your everyday, everyday life has a special purpose. The same scripture, verse 20 says, Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, your ultimate purpose is to glorify God. Everybody say glorify God. Glorify God. Your ultimate purpose is glorify God. Now the word glorify, what does it mean? We always use the word, I glorify him, glorify him, we sing glorify him. What does that word glorify mean? Now glorify means to cause the dignity and the worth of some person, some personal thing, to become manifest and acknowledged. Now what do I mean by that? Maybe I'm talking too long sentences. What I'm saying is, the dignity and worth of somebody to be manifested. The dignity and worth of God, the powerful living God, has to be manifested. When you glorify God, you are actually causing the dignity and the power and the greatness of God to be manifested through you and in you. All right? And worth of, and, and, and become acknowledged. You acknowledge that presence. All right? So the scripture says. The scripture says you are to glorify God in your body and in your spirit, right? So it's, it's making possible for the greatness and worthiness of God to be seen in our lives. The greatness and worthiness of our life to be seen in our normal life, ordinary life. Alright? The greatness and the worthiness of God to be seen in our lives and to acknowledge that His greatness and power has made you who you are today. Has made you who you are today. What you are today is because of His worthiness, His greatness, His power. So when you glorify God, you are actually acknowledging the goodness and worthiness and the greatness of God in your life. I hope you're, you're catching what I'm trying to say. Alright? I hope you catch what I'm trying to say. Alright? So when you glorify God, you are actually getting the, the greatness and the worthiness and the power of God to be seen in your life and you are acknowledging it's because of that worthiness, because of that greatness, today I am what I am. That's glorifying God. Alright? In you 
and through you. How much, how much does Jesus mean to you? How much does Jesus mean to you? We went through communion and I told you, you're bought with a price. I told you that we belong to him, we don't belong to ourselves. You're not your own. And all that I said, how much does Jesus mean to you? If Jesus means it to you as, as so powerfully, so awesomely, you will want to glorify God. You will want to glorify God. Your daily living as a believer must be in such a way that other people see Jesus in you and through you. Other people must see Jesus in you and through you. All right? And you become a living testimony. Your very life will be a witness to people whom you come across. Your very life. You know, sometimes you say, we think, oh, oh, nobody comes to me. But you know, you're living in a place, in a neighborhood that people don't, do not know Christ. You're working in a place where other people do not know Jesus. So every day you have an opportunity. It's just that you need to obey God's direction and your prompting to touch lives. Okay? It's just that. So you become you live from a living testimony and you be a witness to all people whom you come across. There will be anybody whom you have come across, anybody who has been introduced to you, after 15 years, if you have not told that person about the greatness and the worthiness of God, we've got to check our lives. We've got to check our lives as a Christian. Are we living daily with the right focus? The right focus is whoever comes to us somehow must know oh, that fellow belongs to Jesus. Because of what Jesus has done in his life, he is prospering now in his business. All right? And, and the scripture, the very familiar scriptures in Matthew 5 and verse 14 and 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So living daily with the right focus is to live the principles of the gospel and to be daily a witness through your life that has been changed. All our lives have been changed, right? We accept the Christ, we are born again. Our lives have been changed. So what happens is, let your life so shine upon others. So if your life has changed, it must touch somebody else. As if your life has changed, somebody, has, somebody needs to be touched. Now, you are the light of the world, the Bible says, right? Now, four ways can, you can let your light shine today. I want to quickly, very briefly, give you the four ways that your light can shine today. First thing is, be authentic. Everybody say, be authentic. Be authentic. What, does I, what do I mean by saying authentic? Oh, authentic is a big word, right? What do I mean when I say authentic? Authentic is, be genuine in your relationship with people. Be genuine in your relationship with people. In other words, be a sincere friend. In other words, be a sincere friend. Don't say something nice in front of him and condemn him at the back. Right? Be a sincere friend. You are authentic. You are genuine. If you are genuine, people will look to you for your counsel. All you want to know is whether this fellow is sincere or not. Whether he's genuine or not. So the first point here is how can you be a light in today's world is be authentic, be genuine, a sincere friend. Second, examine your heart daily. Examine your heart daily. It cannot be light and dark in the same place, right? You all know that. You cannot have light and darkness in the same place. So, you've got to be faithful and honest without compromise. That means, whatever you do in your life, not only your church life, your life in work, your work life, must also tally. So if you examine your heart daily, you won't have light and darkness. Because, so that people won't say, oh, that fella, he said, God, 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 you witness about God, and then he gave bribe to the policeman. <laughs> you know, so what uh, people are seeing in him is, they're seeing light, they're also seeing dark. So, Light and darkness cannot be together. So if you and I want to be light of the world, we've got to make sure we come and examine our heart daily that no way that we are people of light and no way that they involve the things of the darkness. Things that are crooked, things that are illegal. Alright, people are watching. If you want to live daily, the right focus, we've got to be aware. 
We cannot do anything that is a light and darkness, alright? So be authentic, genuine, examine your heart daily. And the third one is, be an encourager. Be an encourager. The good in another person and say positive things to encourage and build. Always see the good of another person. Always begin to say positive things to encourage and build, alright? And the fourth thing is, let the word of God richly dwell in you. Let the word of God richly dwell in you. That means, you do what the Bible says. If the word of God is dwelling you richly, you will do what the Bible says, you will obey what God is saying, and allow the Holy Spirit to correct us in some areas that we are actually having weaknesses. None of us sitting here, or even the people who are preaching, can say we are perfect. We all have shortcomings, we all have uh, uh, weaknesses in our life, all right? So when we allow, let the word of God richly dwell in us, the word of God will actually correct us. The word of God will correct us in some of our shortcomings and weaknesses. So your light will shine among people who are watching with sincerity and genuineness. If you are sincere, if you are genuine, people are watching us. People are watching us. And then when you go and witness for Christ, they will just receive. They will just receive. If you are an encourager, people will be drawn towards you. People who mix with you are going to realize that you are truly living a good and mature Christian life. People who mix with you will know. They will know whether you are really truly living as a Christian and are living daily with the right focus. People will know. All right? Because the word of God is richly dwelling in you, what will happen is your actions, your attitudes uh, become so obvious that you are a godly person and you are a sincere person. And that happens, you are living daily with the right focus because daily people are going to be added to the kingdom. Daily you will touch lives in some area. All right? So your everyday life has a special purpose. Your everyday life has a special purpose. The way you live, the way you talk, the way you encourage people, the way the, 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 the word of God dwells in you richly, all that works apart in you to make you live daily with the right focus as a believer. As a believer, all right? In concluding, I mean, just winding up this, this whole thing that I've talked about. Now, the body and the spirit of man have been created by God to honor God. All right, remember that to honor God. Our body and spirit belongs to God because He bought us with a costly price by dying for us. All right. Now, living daily with the right focus as believers is to glorify God in our bodies and in our spirit and bear much fruit. I want to end up with one final verse. One final verse that tells us about this: How do we live daily in the right focus? You're going to glorify God in your body in your spirit and bear much fruit. Closing John chapter 15 and verse 8. John 15 and verse 8 says, This is to my Father's glory. This is to my Father's glory that what? That you bear much fruit. This is your Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. I want to read this again. All right, this, every one of us, even I need this. We need to remind ourselves. This is to my Father's glory. You want to glorify God? I want to glorify God and as a believer. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Church, here is a challenge for every believer. It's a challenge for every believer to live daily with the right focus, to give honor to God by glorifying Him in our bodies and bear much fruit. So if you are here, if you are closing this message, the, the, the musicians can come to the front. If you are, clo you are, you are closing this, this um, topic for today, if your life has not caught much, much fruit, one area of you glorifying God is not complete. You glorify God in your body, in your spirit, and bear much fruit. That's what the scripture says. Alright? So think about it. I've been a Christian for 15 years, 20 years. Am I bearing fruit? Am I bearing much fruit for the kingdom of God? The question we need to ask is, am I being valuable for the kingdom of God? Is my life of any value for God's kingdom? You may be an engineer, you may be a teacher, 
you may be a doctor, you may be anything else. Is your life of any value to the kingdom of God? That is what we need to understand, friends. Right? So we glorify God in our bodies and our spirit and bear much fruit, proving that we are truly His disciples. We are proving. Stand with me, friends.